what? I love showing you the city life of Africa. But personally, I'm a village boy and this is the place that I would love to spend my entire life, man. I got bored of Nairobi because I feel like Nairobi is too modernized for me. So I wanted to get out today just to go and see the countryside of Kenya. We drove from the Tika Highway, of which I think is one of the beautiful roads that I've seen since I came to Nairobi and joined the village that looks like my village in Ghana, which shows you that everywhere in Africa looks the same. I came in here, I met this handsome gentleman planting beans and I wanted to help him. He was like, can you do it? I was like, come on, I'm a village boy just like you. But hey, you know what? It's good to see that people were based in Africa, left to the West, and now returned back to make Africa home again. I'm impressed of what Kenyans are doing. I feel like Kenyans do large scale farming because I'm seeing huge farms in here. Please do me a favor and let's all come together and clap for all the Kenyan farmers. I really salute each and every one of you. But hey, you know what? I came here to see a man who left America and started an animal farming in here. He wants to tell me his story, but I told him that, please do me a favor, let me, just wait for me. Let me plant this, uh, what do you call it, beans. And I'm gonna come in here to harvest my own beans. I'm not gonna do this for free because they are not paying me. So I need to come for my beans in future. So come with me. Let's go talk to Tony who left the United States of America, left his engineering job and came to Africa to do what he loves. If you are new to the channel, my name is Wadamaya, the one and only village boy from Ghana. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and be part of this awesome family. Aya Maya. Mr. Tony. Yes, sir. You're the one behind this animal farming. Yes. Someone told me about you and I had to find you. I travel like almost how many kilometers? More than 100 kilometers to come yes, find you. Yes, 100 kilometers. Well, maybe not 100. Not 100. Maybe 40. 40. 40 kilometers. I'm exaggerating because the, uh, the, the way was too long for me, you know. And the weather didn't help either. It's so cold in Africa. Yes, yes. Let it's me know, rainy weather. What is your name? And uh, where are you from? Which part of Kenya are you from? I'm, my name is Tony Gishanka. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am from a town called Gatondo mm -hmm. in Keno, the two places. Um, and I came to this place, I bought this land so that I can farm animals. And you can see I have a lot of animals here. You bought this land? Just to farm animals. Just to farm animals. You were born and raised in Nairobi? Born and raised in Nairobi. And what happened to you? And then I moved to the US. Oh. Uh, when I moved to the US, I was there for 25 plus years. 25 years in the States? Uh, plus. <laughs> in the I'm States. So sorry. Yeah. What were you doing in there? In the States, I worked for a technology company. And then uh, after a while, you, you hit that ceiling. And then I started working by myself um, I got a little bit of trucking warehouse and then that also got to a point and that magic bulb lit up and said well you gotta go back home home is home is best you established your own business in America uh, yes I did and you left all that uh, I left all that came back look around why animal farming why animal farming I I, I I think animal farming was easier for me mm. than plant farming. Uh, this is a little bit more predictable. Uh, I can decide when we're going to slaughter the animals. I can decide when the rains are going to come so that I can plant. So it's a little bit more predictable for me. I love animals. I was exposed to animal farming earlier on mm. when I was growing up at my grandfather's farm. And I think that's my inspiration. And that's where it came from for the animal. How farm. long have you been in Africa? I'm back now five years. Five um, years? Five years. And how long have you been doing this farming? Uh, this is about three years. You mean you achieved all this yes, in, in Kenya within three years? Three years, yes. You brought some money from the state? Well, I had some little money. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a challenge. Uh, as you can see, it's still in development. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, once it's fully functioning, then we'll have more buildings here. We'll have more pigs. We'll have more ducks. We'll have more rabbits. Mm. Yes. Tony, I wanted to know how was yeah. the transition from leaving America back to Kenya because mm. I mean you were out there for like 25 plus years yeah. and coming back how was the transition were you able to mingle the transition is is a little tough I always tell people the first year the first year is a little touch and go um, you're always trying to figure out things it's like you're learning new things mm. but home is best so you know, you have to look back and say, when I went to America, I didn't know much about America either. So I learned that system. At least I was born here. So I should be able to adapt, adjust, and make something out of it. So you mean like, do you regret coming back home? I wish I came out, I wish I came out there sooner. Why? The freedom. The freedom, the quality of life. This place is amazing. I don't know why I keep, when I talk to people, they keep on telling me the freedom, the quality of life. Yeah. I don't understand because we, uh, as young Africans, yeah. we just want to go there. And you guys are coming back. No, 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 no. I see a lot of people come here and they ask me again, why here, why now? And I say, listen, you have to program yourself not for the short term, for the long term. Hmm. It's a process. And once you get started, you know, every journey begins with the first step. Yeah. The first step you make is more towards the destination. And the sooner you do it, the better. Tony, I want you to take me around of what you've done so far so that people can see. Sounds good. Let's go. Yeah. They won't be like, I'm making things up. <laughs> <laughs> this here mm -hmm. is, um, is a pig stay. Okay. Um, oh. We have pigs. Um, we're using half of the shed, as you can see. Uh, we have pigs here. Uh, this is where the pigs hang out. We have them on different ages. Some of them are pregnant. So if you come here next year, you'll definitely have more pigs than, than you see here. But you mean like you started this three years ago? Actually, the, pigs, the pig thing was a little different. Okay. Uh, I started with a few pigs that um, I, I had a friend that was struggling to feed their pigs and they told me, Tony, please, please t just take the pigs. Uh, you pay me later. And I said, wow, uh, I never kept pigs before, uh, but I'll give it a shot. So I took the pigs and one of the pigs is Mama Pig. Mama Pig? Yeah, Mama Pig. Hi. One of the pigs is Mama Pig. Now, Mama Pig, come on, wake up, Mama. Mama Pig <coughs> is very pregnant, oh, okay. but she's, she's due on Christmas Day. Uh, Mama Pig, you're tired. So, on here, um, we have some fish. We have a pond here where the ducks spent most of their day. Um, Red ducks in here. Yeah, we rear a lot of ducks. Uh, these are what you call the pecan ducks, the camber ducks. Um, so we rear them here. Um, so when they come during the day, first thing is they go for a swim. You see them grooming. Uh, and then after they groom, they'll go out. Now these ducks are quite interesting because um, for one, they don't brood. Uh, and they lay their eggs everywhere. So, apart from uh, the few eggs that we collect, uh, my pigs enjoy being outside because they <laughs> feed on the eggs. So now here, part of the feeding okay. is, this is the, the pig manure. Okay. So when we switch the pig place, this is where we come and dump it. Now when we dump it here, um, you'll find a lot of chicken will come here. To feed and what do they feed on? Um, let me see if I can show you. So what the chicken would feed on is if you dig a little bit you'll find there's a lot of worms. Uh, maybe not this side. Come this side and see. You see there'll be a lot of worms. So, oh here you go. You see the worms? So this is basically what we 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 you know we'll we'll come here get a whole bucket and go feed the the, the new chicks. Mm. We have new chicks, so uh, but you also see 
the chicken will come here. That is freshly cleaned. So you see there's a lot of fly action mm. there. So they come lay eggs. And in mm. seven days, we have more food for the chicken. So we harvest a lot of water. All these are massive water tanks you see here. Um, basically what you're seeing, half of it is under there. So we have about 250,000 liters of water from these four tanks. Can so, a, yes. A borehole? It's not a borehole, it's basically a concrete tank. Basically the same wall goes all the way down. So when it rains, all this water, it's a lot of water. Ooh. It all goes down here. And when it goes down there, so we have water for at least two years. So we never run out of water and it's free Incredible. from Mother Nature. Uh, so here, here is where we have the chicken. Again, our chicken, they spend the day outside. Uh, we do feed them grain, um, but you can see the, you know, eggs. that's a freshly laid egg. Fresh laid eggs. Yeah, oh, wow. so we got, we got more eggs. We get about three trays of eggs every day. How many trays? Three trays, about three trays of eggs every day. Yeah, so we have chicken, see they are everywhere laying eggs. They're yeah, they're feeding them. Yeah. This is Mweni. When he takes care of the cuckoos. Okay. Uh, this used to be my job, so <laughs> <laughs> you're well familiar. Yeah. Sorry these things are bent because sometimes having animals outside, when the pigs come here, the pigs love to eat uh, chicken feed. They'll come and they'll they destroy this. Oh. Oh. They're hungry. Oh. Oh. Something here. Come in here, we show you something. So here is our brooder. So this chicken. We put them on eggs, um, we put them on eggs um, I think two days ago. So in another 20 days, we're gonna get chicks. So you don't use incubator? We don't use incubator, we do natural because it's, it's convenient, it's cheap. I, I know so many people don't know yeah. this method. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us how many days does it take to hatch these eggs? 21 days. 21 days, 21 days we have more chicks. Here we have to disinfect Where before we, we go. We're going inside the rabbit house, rabbit the, house. the hatchery. Um, what is this for? That is to disinfect your feet in oh, case you, you brought in some germs. Oh, right. The rabbits, they are a little bit more sensitive uh, than most. So you stick your feet in there and you come in into the rabbit house. But why rabbits? Why rabbits? Actually, rabbits are probably the most profitable animal you can raise. Mm. Yes, and I, be, and I hope that everybody in Africa can, can raise rabbits because you don't need a lot of space. Obviously, this is a little bit on a larger scale. Mm. You can build one of these cages, fairly inexpensive material, and if you have three mothers, you can easily feed your rabbit, your father with rabbit meat, which rabbit meat is the best meat out there white meat out there. Uh -huh. uh, yes, we, we usually actually eat more rabbit meat in my house than chicken. Ooh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, but also because we have a lot, we sell to restaurants who, um, who have rabbit meat. It's, you know, still not very, you know, most people don't embrace it quite well yet, but I think the minute they realize it's, it's actually very healthy, um, it's, um, it's a deal. But I think um, you also sell to people who want to keep it as pets. Right? Yes, I sell to, you know, a lot of farmers come here, um, people who are getting into it. We also still feel new at it. You see, we, we are expanding. Um, but, you know, we, we, we have our share of farmers that come here. 
if you see something that you like, you know, we'll tell you to, to take it. Um, so I have a lot of farmers that, you know, practice rabbit rearing uh, that got their rabbits from here. Yes. So we feed the rabbits with pellets. Those are the pellets. Hay and water. That's they, it. they drink a lot of water. Yes, that's it. Nothing else. Uh, we don't feed them the green stuff because then you get into the problems of bloating. Um, but those, those three things, hay, pellets, and pellets is a complete meal. Uh, I'll show you how we make it here. It's a complete meal. Um, so when they eat it, it's pretty much sufficient. The hay adds the fiber part, um, and then they drink a lot of water. They drink a lot of water. Um, so about a bunny this size here, like now this one here, somebody might ask me, how old is this? This is about two months. So in, so in another month and a half, they are ready to be on a dinner plate. Three months. Three and a half months. Three and a half months. Yes, yeah. They are, they are, they are ready to, to be slaughtered. I'm seeing a lot of cow dunk in here. Yeah, we have cows. Oh, the okay. cows live here now temporarily before we build a shed for them out there. Oh, the but they're still calves. We'll go look for them. Okay. I know they're somewhere here. Oh. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do goats at another time. Mm. That's a milking parlor for the goats. Mm. Uh, the goats have their own sections because goats fight a lot. Yeah. Um, but when we do uh, goats again, we're going to do the goats, what you call zilla grazing or semi, but mostly inside, not outside. outside. Yes, because over here it gets really, really hot and the feeding becomes a problem because they want to be sitting under the shade the whole day yeah. and then they can't produce. So it was just... Cost, eh? Yeah, breed, the breed wasn't the, the, the right one for, for this area. So if you come out this way, this is a section that we have for... This is where we keep the little ones. Um, Why is a hen catching <laughs> ducks? Uh, good question. Uh, all the ducks, the, all, the, all the ducks that you see here, they're hatched by chicken because the ducks don't brood. So we use the duck eggs we brood with the chicken and we get ducklings. <laughs> now, if you look closer, there's also three other, uh, three other strange looking birds. Yeah. Those are guinea foils. Ooh. The first time we were hatching them here, so I got eggs from a farmer friend and we don't have any guinea foil here, but we'll see what comes out. So these ducklings, they are about, Maybe a month and change, maybe a month. Uh, but at this particular stage, mm. you know, they're gonna be, the mother might move, but because I've never hatched the guinea foils before, I might just let her nurture the, these three until they're adults. Mm. The darklings, if you take these darklings now and throw them in the dam, they're perfectly fine. Mm. Yeah, they're perfectly fine. <laughs> If you come here, this is where we mix the feeds for our animals, mm. our lovely animals. Um, so we we'll buy the raw materials, uh, and the raw materials is the tricky part because you gotta make sure if it's wheat bran, it's a wheat bran. Yeah. Uh, so we, you know, we 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 control where we source our materials 100 <coughs> percent. So that's wheat bran. This is wheat pollen. It's a little powderish. Um, we have the protein. This is the soya. Yeah. This is a byproduct when you make yeah. soya. So this is what we call the soya we cake. We blend all of them together. We blend all of them together. Oh, and, feed them. and then we feed the animals. So when we bread them, let me show you um, what we just made today. Was. So we, we, if you come here, you'll, you'll, you'll see we mix everything here together. 
mixer. This is a mixer. So it'll go down. Once it goes down, it'll come out from this end here. Once it's blend. See? Now once it mixes it, it's a big spiral here. It goes up and down. It'll, it'll, it'll come out from this end. It'll do its quality control here. And then this thing picks it up. It goes to that side. So when it comes to this side, here is where we make the pellets. We put the tin here. Comes out as pellets. This, it'll come out as this. And this is where we feed the rabbits. Huh? Yeah. Oh, he started it. So, hold on, watch. He'll put it in here and you'll see what will come out. It comes out hot. Hmm? It's hot. Right? But do you think that it's worth it to invest in animal farming? Absolutely. Absolutely. We have five different animals here. We have the ducks, the chicken, the rabbits, the cows are a work in progress, mm. and we also have the dogs. So, you can make a living doing it. And, um, um, you know, we have brothers and sisters in the diaspora yes. who are looking forward to come back home. If you should say a message for them to come back, what would that message be? That message would be, uh, I <coughs> you have to be passionate about farming. So find whatever you're passionate about. It doesn't have to be animal farming, it could be plant farming. Uh, just whatever you're passionate about, something that even when you don't make money, you still enjoy doing. Uh, and uh, again, I'm gonna say when you look at the long term, mm. you know, don't look at something, you know, in the West, we're used to getting a paycheck every week or bi-weekly, so you get comfortable with that paycheck. Uh, this one here, you could go months without yeah, anything, so you're always going to think long term. But even with that, maybe at the end of the year, when you look it up and average it out, you're still going to come out ahead. I just want to say thank you so much for talking to me.